Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And this is for anybody that owns a company or maybe you lead a team and you want to do it more effectively, become even more successful, generate more revenue. It blends some major points in terms of coaching and science. We never look at the two of those put together. He does, and he's with CoachingForRelevance.com, and he's back with us. Randy Swaim is on the program. Hey, Randy, how are you? Hey, good. Good to see you again. You too. Yeah, welcome back. And I, I know you run deep in terms of studying this kind of stuff where there's a, a blend with science and, yeah, I don't want to say basic coaching, but mm -hmm. really solid coaching principles to mm -hmm. reach your full potential. So where do we go with this today? What well, what I'm going to do is, and I'm not going to kind of focus a lot on the science, but it's it's a concept, as you know, my organizational maneuverability concept is one that takes, uh, you've heard me say this before, it takes uh, pilot lessons, but applies them to leading teams in a changing, unpredictable environment and everything. And this is a key aspect of it. And I'm going to actually bring out one insight from an author that had something that's very aligned. And in terms of situation awareness and decision making and all that, it could also, and this could be an hour long conversation, but it could be, uh, it could bring some neuroscience aspects as well. So we'll, we'll talk about that uh, as we look at this. I love uh, when you give examples too. Mm -hmm. Real practical examples when somebody is is dealing with something, whether it's somebody on both sides of the fence, whether yep. if it's a, you know calling an employee team member or or the boss or the owner, um, mm -hmm. love to look at that too. If we could uh, include that and want to include everybody else, so instant feedback, Steve at Gmail dot com is uh, best way to reach us if you want to weigh in today. Cool. And I'll tell you what, with what I talk about here, which will take a few minutes and that's all probably, uh, it'll go to exactly what you're talking about. You'll see a lot of insights with, with that, how it really comes into play if you do it from a professional standpoint and not just a sort of a rote, simplistic way. Gotcha. So it's very interesting. And so uh, I'll go ahead and, and jump into this real quick. And first of all, I'm going to give you a couple of the basic insights with it. And then we can kind of explore it a little bit more if you want. But it's very aligned, as I mentioned, from my organizational maneuverability concept and also some neuroscience aspects. But what I want to do is I want to bring out a, a concept that uh, uh, there is an, uh, an author that was uh, interviewed uh, recently. Uh, her name is uh, Jillian Benfield, and she wrote a book that's called The Gift of the Unexpected, you know, kind of thing. Mm. And it's very interesting. And, and it's interesting that in this interview, she was asked about when your journey goes unexpectedly and goes off plan, you know, when things aren't wrote academic when things are not what you expected and you've heard me say this a thousand times probably that when those factors that you would have never expected come on scene can you do it and it's interesting because she brought out two basic concepts which are very interesting and when you talk about an un unexpected situation like this there's two aspects and i'm going to actually kind of read the quotes because they're the same quotes that if you went out and Google them, these are things you'd see, but there are two aspects. And, and as she stated it, and I'm quoting her, she said, when something is, is happening like that, you overcome the unexpected or you undergo it. Unquote. And, hmm. the, and the, the point on that is very interesting because if you were to go out and Google those words in this context, uh, I'll give you a couple of quotes that were typically would come up on on the definition of it. Overcome, when you talk about overcome, you it usually shows a picture of people that are standing on the mountain, jump up and down, and you're doing this on the top of the mountain and all. Sure. Um, when you talk about undergo, what you're doing is generally an image of somebody who's about to undergo surgery, and it's sort of an image where somebody is struggling through something or or something like that so the two are very different and there's a good quote on here and i'll kind of i'll, I'll mention i'm going to give the quote but then i'll mention just a couple of the leadership aspects that leaders need to kind of be aware of it sometimes and this is a quote uh, it's very aligned with my organizational maneuverability and she brought out a very key truth, and I'll just go ahead and quote it, and I'm going to read it just so I quote exa her exactly kind of thing. But it says this, when you, when you are experiencing the unexpected, 
we are not supposed to just rush or skip over the hard part. Skip over the darkness, get to the mountaintop and as quickly as possible. We must admit that we need help sometimes and seek it out to address those deep, dark places sometimes and basically overcoming as well as growing and developing. And the, the point that I kind of mentioned on this when you're talking about leadership is a very key point on this because you've probably seen uh, people do this too when there's unexpected factors that are coming on and people are thinking like, oh, God, oh, geez, you know, kind of thing like this, you know, then they want to just turn and go over there. Well, you know what? There might be some times where that can be beneficial, but when you change the course to go over there, it could be that you got to some level, but you didn't get to the level you were hoping for. You didn't accomplish the real success that you were looking for because you changed the thing. There are times when you adapt, depending on how strong the the the, the unexpected situation is, but you got to realize, and I can tell you that this has been a key part of my whole life journey, that going through those tough times is what develops you. It wait. It's what helps make you become, and it helps you gain insights that you didn't have beforehand. And so, guess what? There are times when, even though there's a challenge in front of your team, and sometimes you step in front of your team and lead them into that challenge, perhaps, kind of thing, because going through that is what in some cases, further develops their insight deeper than just road academic stuff, but insight on, uh, you know, what they were feeling, how they overcame this, the, the doubt within themselves, but also found dramatic ways that they would have never predicted before, dramatic ways to overcome this particular challenge. And that can give them insights that down the road, when something even worse comes on the scene, they're ready to handle it. And so hmm. when you talk about this whole aspect of the difference between overcoming and undergoing, you know, um, if, 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 if it's something that's keeping your company, you know, alive and not going bankrupt, yeah, you may have to just find a way of overcoming and getting there. But if you're talking about, um, uh, really developing your company and your team's potential and really growing you and your team's potential, insights, vision, strategic thinking, and all of that. Very often, that is maximized as you go through that challenge. And so it's just something to think about. And I know in the military, there have been a couple of cases throughout military history where, you know, sometimes where you've got to you've got to do this. It's a battle and it's tough, but we got to do this, you know, kind of thing. And there are times when the commander had to get out in front of his unit and lead him into the charge, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so, so it, it's very interesting. It, it was a great insight from, uh, from Jillian on that. And it's very aligned with my concept of organization maneuverability of, of getting a sense for, to what extent, and the question that I would leave for some of the listeners is simply this, to what extent do you have a tendency to just immediately bypass every time a little challenge comes up? Guess hmm. what? It could be limiting your success, possibly. We have a question based on just that. Go for it. This is Jake in Reddington Shores, Florida. Checks in at instantfeedbacksteve at gmail.com. Okay. Says, how much should a company or team prepare for challenges? I've found that many times what we worry about never takes place. I'd love your insight on that. And you know what? Uh, and, and forgive me, what was his name again? Jake. Jake. Jake, you have my compliments on that question. Because what I would, what I would throw out is a good insight on this relative to this one con concept. You're right. Sometimes people can get so tied up and so delayed that they never get it done. Yeah. Hmm. And that's why I say it's never either or. There's a t sense that when you're a leader, to what extent do I see, I sense that 
that the, that there's real value in in the team for this. To what extent did you develop your team going along the way before this ever happened? To the point where I'm more aware of some of the unexpected factors that could happen. What's the worst thing that could happen on this journey? And how are we going to do that? And they may have thought through that even before they got there. But there are some times, like you said, like he said, you can become so distracted. Is that factor becoming a real distraction? In which case, tweak around it and keep going. Or when is it not a distraction because you don't want to come off the journey that you're on to get to the goal that you're looking for? And, and so there's a lot of aspects that, that can answer that question, but it's a key insight that he's asking uh, relative to your team, relative to your company, to you, to what extent do you need to really bring that into play? Because that will answer the question. You know, there are times when, you know, pushing through this particular challenge is so awesome for our team. And there's times where it might be a distraction. If we do decide, and it's it's another follow-on question to what Jake said. Uh, like I said, Jake, if, you know, you have my compliments on that question. But the bottom line is, if you do have your team kind of swing around that challenge, mm. how are you going to still use the value of the challenge for your team? Because if you decide that, because of the critical timing that we need to get there, you may have to do that possibly. But in this, in the source of that, after you've gone through it, what kind of conversations you have with your team? I'm one of the first questions I might have asked my team to get them thinking and processing and and from neuroscience, getting their brain going and stuff like this and vision. One of the questions I might ask him was, "What if we couldn't have that sidestepped that challenge?" What do you guys, what would you guys perceive as the challenge, as what we needed to do, as to what was going to hold us back? And how as a team do you think we should overcome that? And that would have got them thinking some of that. So the the, the point that Jake made is is a very valuable one. But this diff, this insight between those two, it's not like it's always either or, no. But it's you know, to what point are you bypassing value if you do just go over here? Maybe you need to this time. But at what point are you bypassing that, the value that your team could get on development and growing through that particular challenge? And a lot of times, you know what, if if timing is not overly critical and it may only take an extra couple of days or something, guess what? Walking through that may be the plus. Uh, so there, there's a lot of aspects on that. And what determines that decision is the factors that are involved, the criticality of the time, the strategic planning of it, and 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 also the threat to your company. You know, if, you're, hmm. if your company, if you don't get there by Monday and your company is going to go bankrupt, you may, not, you may need to get through there for fast and push forward. But when you think about a coaching leadership perspective of leading your team, even if you had to sidestep it a little bit, I'd have the conversation with the team and I'd say, so what if you, what if we couldn't sidestep it? What do you guys perceive? What, what did you guys envision on this? How, how, how are you going to get through it in a way that's successful? And those are some of the questions that people have to sort of think about. It's real, but this is a, when, when Jillian came up with this as her discussion in the interview, I'm sitting there going, cause that is so aligned with organizational maneuverability. And it's, it's that insight of to the processing ability of your team. And here's a newsflash. What if they had a challenge come on the scene and it was the day when you were homesick. And so you weren't there. Hmm. Could, okay. Could they handle that? And are you developing your team to the point where they can grow with that and really reach radical uh, you know, success for your team? Even if maybe you had to go over here and help somebody or whatever, who knows, you know, kind of thing. But there's a lot of factors like that that can come into play. So, so Jake, you have my compliments on that question. And it, it's, uh, it's a valuable question, but the, there's a lot of factors that can come into play there. Uh, if you do feel like you need to kind of swing around that struggle point there, okay, that's cool. But how are you really going to use 
what was there to still benefit and grow and develop your team rather than just applauding yourself for rote academic superficial things. Oh, we put that aside. Okay, great. What if you couldn't? Is what? it possible to yeah. over prepare? Like let's say a company is is looking at uh some clients canceling mm -hmm. or to have already, you know, maybe they're thinking that well, what if another one does? What if another one does? Uh contingency plans, can you over prepare? You can so overly prepare. And if I was coaching somebody right now, one of my next questions would be, how would you know that you're over preparing? And and well, yeah. and, <laughs> and 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 the and the question on that to a certain extent, and and here's sort of the neuroscience processing uh, aspect of it, what I would say is in your brain, if your entire focus is only on we're gonna do this, 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 and this, and that is all you were even aware of or thought about or envisioned mm. guess what you're probably becoming too focused but if you say hey here's here's how i think we're going to go you know what if we do decide to do this boy you know what these are the things we just want to watch out for and if they do start to come on scene or this starts to happen here's how we'll adapt for it and you know what if your team is thinking that way Instead of just thinking, well, boop, 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 boop. You've, you've heard me say before, Steve, that I've heard uh, I've heard pilots uh, say that, well, it should have been like this. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. So what caused you to miss mm. the real factors involved and stuff like that? So it's it's just that's a whole aspect of this very creative and valuable situation. And so the question you ask is very valuable, but to what extent is your situationally awareness and your vision truly aware that you are becoming overly central focused without any real strategic awareness of what we're going to do if, boom. You know, one of the things in the military, I used to tell people all the time, a real good military commander so often um, I, I'm not saying in the military so much, but basically you have people that just say, here's what we're going to do, boy, gosh, we got to just make this happen kind of thing. Well, a true commander, when you're in map in battle, will look for the evidences of what the enemy is doing. So if we are supposed to go in and attack here, if I see evidence that the enemy is sliding their forces around this way, to come and cut us off from the side and everything. What's my strategy if I see that? And so when you're talking about a rapidly changing and unpredictable environment, you've got to kind of keep some of this in style. And it's not just becoming overly focused on going through academic stuff. Well, this is happening. I guess we should do this, you know, or that, but it's also not just completely bypassing, you know, how do you use the challenge that comes into play to really grow your team's awareness and, and, and uh, situational awareness and strategic thinking and decision-making and ability to process it well and come up with the decisions that when you get to the destiny, your bosses are kind of <laughs> talking you guys through the roof, you know, kind of thing. And, and that's, a, that's a key part of it. So the questions that uh, Jake, you asked and you asked are both very valuable questions, but those are Got some another things one. to think about. Go ahead. Yeah. Got another one. This one is somewhat unrelated, but uh, relatable. If okay. you will. We can make it relatable. <laughs> this is, well, no, it is. <laughs> like, okay. I, I'm done okay. with this too. Oh, okay. Uh, this is Carol in Searsport, Maine. Okay. Instantfeedback, Steve at gmail.com. She says, <coughs> I have a coworker who always blames others for issues and never takes responsibility. How should we deal with someone like that? You know what? You got to get them really beginning to process because un unfortunately, and, I, and, and she has my compliments for that question, because in today's world, people have a tendency to just play blame games and not, I, I had a relative one time that, that I paid to have them go to counseling and stuff. And in the process of, of uh, telling me how the counseling counseling was going, all she did is blame everything else on planet earth. And it's like, that ain't make, that ain't making it. 
you know, kind of thing. And, and so the thing, the thing that I would uh, throw her out is what kind of questions do you need to ask that person? Because the first thing is if you're just costing, if somebody said, well, it's just their fault. And I go, Oh, really? Just their fault. And, you know, most people would say, well, yeah. And I say, what makes you say so? What part of it was the fault of something or somebody else? Oh, what? Okay. Why was it that at the time that was happening, you were not aware? And when you, if you were aware, what would you have done differently? And so, and that's part of, if, if they're kind of a supervisor of the team or something, that's one thing. But even if they're just team members together, this is that team synergy that you built, you know, can the team members help each other? when situations like that happen and what keeps that person from doing it rather than just falling back to the blame game. And I would get them into some challenging conversations on their part with that because of what she's talking about. It's a good question. Yeah. And I've dealt with that before where somebody's just always blaming somebody else when yeah. they, they do have some responsibility it might not be all their responsibility, but it's, it's never me. It's never me. And that's very yep. frustrating. Yeah, it is. And you look at it and you go, did you communicate with them? What? Hmm. What What did you communicate with them? Well, uh, I, I didn't. Why didn't you? You know, kind of thing. And, and, and all of this, like I said, you'd be surprised at how many times I've heard a pilot say, and again, I'm not bad mouthing pilots or aviation. I, obviously, I've been one. That's been a lot of my career kind of thing uh, prior to becoming a coach sure. and all that. But uh, you'd, you'd be surprised at how many times I've heard somebody, well, it should have been like this. And I go, yeah, but it wasn't. What kept you from performing when it wasn't just a road academic picture? And these are questions when you're talking about uh, leading teams in a challenging, unpredictable, you know, VUCA environment and everything. As a leader, you got to get out of strictly the road academic aspect, but understand the real application of it. And how you need to ask the questions that get some of the people on your team really rethinking and not just to fill academic factoids, but to really get a sense of going forward, what do we need to do to make sure the synergy synergy is 120%? Bad math, but good good concept. <laughs> kind of a, and and uh, and also when 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 you get somebody that's just blaming everybody else, how do you bring them to the threshold? where they're going to change that. Because here's the thing. If somebody else is always blaming you, what are you going to do? Oh, well, uh, I'd say this. Okay, well, why don't you tell yourself that right now? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And that might be a question you want to ask yourself. So those are some aspects about that aspect of it that uh, a lot of people uh, kind of forget about. Do you think it's reasonable in this situation that Carol brings up that if somebody is blaming others when they have a, a role in it, Mm -hmm. to ask them, oh, wow, okay, uh, how do you think we could have made that better? And and that's exactly one of the questions that I would have probably asked them. But the other question I would have said is, when you saw them doing that, what did you do? Hmm. You know, because there's a time when, as a team member, you kind of go over and 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 come alongside as a supporting team member sure. and say, hey, you know what? this factor I think is involved and this person goes, Oh, Oh yeah. I didn't think about that. Well, let's do this. Oh, okay. And together they make that difference. So there's a lot of aspects on that sort of stuff that when you're talking about being a leader, not only are you modeling correctly for your team, but uh, are, are you helping to develop within your team that aspect of, just bringing radical results in ways you would have never expected. And guess what? Mm. At the end of it, when you're, when the CEO of your company comes in and wants to shake you all's hand, there you go. You know, that that's amazing. But the, these are all aspects when you're talking about this overcoming versus undergoing and bringing a lot of that in a challenging environment. These are things that people got to think about. And, um, and so the, 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 you know, uh, Carol and Jake, the, the questions that they sent in were very well. They have my compliments on those questions. Yeah. And, uh, but these are just key aspects that so often people in today's society 
just go back to rote superficial academic things. That's not where true success comes from. I yeah. when you say road, you know, academic and that entire phrase, I think right away my head switches into autopilot. It sounds and, like people are on autopilot. And that's exactly <laughs> and that is exactly what people do. And they yeah. and what happens is if it didn't fit just a rote academic scene, guess what? They start playing a blame game because this is what yeah. they said it should have been like that. Well, guess what? Right. The factors were a little bit different. And sometimes they're that much different but it makes a difference. And sometimes the factors are that much different. Can you really get radical results when you see that? And can your team do it if you're tied up or you got sick and didn't weren't able to come in today? Can your team make that difference? Are you leading and developing them and molding them and modeling for them that benefit? So your team and your, your division and your organization is better. Well, that to me, that would be the goal to know, not not to the point where they don't need you anymore, but to the point where they got that, you know, they still they're always going to need your direction. We yep. need your direction. If somebody's looking to up their game, they're dealing with a lot, want to be looking at uh, looking at something in a different lens. Uh, how do we find you? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, as I've said before, and as as you know. Uh, I don't do sales pitches, so I just build relationships. If somebody has a need, yeah, I'll come alongside and we'll create it. But, uh, but uh, they can go to my website, coachingforrelevance.com. And on the uh, front page, there's uh, down at the bottom, there's my email and my cell phone. Uh, they can give me a call. And uh, like I said, they don't have to feel like I'm going to give them a sales pitch. If they have a d real need, yeah, we'll come up with something and I'll tell them. But uh, uh, if they just want to have a conversation, we'll do that. Excellent. Uh, always great having you on, Randy. Great insight. I love how you blend science, you know, because you're always got your eye on the forefront of what's going on in terms of studies and, and updates. And uh, and you're a nice guy. So it's great having you on. Well, I'll tell you what, I must have paid you enough money since you said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm listen, gonna... I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure being on with you, too. So uh, uh, appreciate it. And I look forward to the next time for sure. Same. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.